Hi, today we're going to create the smoothest account balance widget ever made in Waste and Webflow. Just look at that. Like, shoo. Wow, it's a work of art. And even if you refresh the data, look at that. Look at that. This provides a content flashing free experience. Like just every little detail is perfect in here. And the line is even fully dynamic with data on wi on not on waste, on Xano. Look at that. We update that and if we let's just reload out the whole page, look at that. We will get a different graph. And if we are updating the data while we are on the page, we will even have a super nice transition. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Like something like this was never built on a waist, like this smooth, this just like flowing, like this is web flow. So let's get started on how to build this. And actually, let's start in Webflow. Um, just a few things to point out. Um, I will be adding the template in the video description so you can just go crazy in there. I just want to walk you through the thing. The graph itself is some uh, CSS and yeah, then just some attributes added on there. Right in here with the polyline of um, ID just so that you know that you are aware that this exists in here. Perfect. Um, and then we just have the content holder, right? And we have the graph widget. This holds everything. The graph widget holder is the thing that is actually giving the width with the minimum width. And we have this reset button in here that will just have a waste attribute of reset revenue amount applied to it that will trigger the reset in the waste action. And then we have the trigger that will have waste cloak true. So we hide it. And then we have waste trigger revenue load, revenue load. So actually, if I click this button, it will click this button to do the animation. Now I could just have that tied to this one, but I just wanted to showcase that this is something that is possible. So feel free to switch this around if you want to and just get rid of this one. But I just wanted to use the custom component here as a trigger with a trigger tag because I thought that's a neat thing to do. And then we have the amount. And yeah, we just have the K and the dollar sign in front of the amount. And this number will be dynamic in here. Um, we have the count duration of two seconds. We have the width attribute of revenue amount applied to it. We have the animation counter attribute applied to it. And we're using some jQuery to get that. I'll show you that later on. Uh, uh, yeah, Ray got me, got me all excited about jQuery. So now we'll have it in every tutorial. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Let's just do every second one. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we have decimals too. So we're going to show two decimals um, in here for the number. And yeah, then we just have the current month. We just have the attribute for waste and current revenue month applied to that. And we have the weeks in here that they don't have attributes, but the week amount has an attribute of waste week one amount and iterating like the same process week two, week three, week four. Perfect. So let's save this and let's move over to waste. And yeah, let's go through the code. Ah, look at that. It just flows. Wonderful. So let's actually start uh, from the beginning. I'm still getting used to that. Now everything is turned around. Uh, Nelson, you gotta, gotta please let the team know we need one on top and going down <laughs> because like, like the other way around is just confusing me. <laughs> um, and then we have here load revenue data. So when the page starts loading, we're going to perform the request to get the monthly revenue. This is this request we're doing in here to get the monthly revenue information. I will include the Xano snippet uh, in the video description as well. So you can play around with that as well. And then we have to set the current month. So we have this 
action called set current month. We apply it to the current month field. We do set text, plain text. We have this function. We give it the possible months and then we run this function so that we're going to return the month. Very simple. So we're going to set the month in here and we're going to set the revenue amount. This actually comes from calculating all weeks that we get in Xano together into one. And actually what we're going to do every week we get in Xano, I mean, just go into that every week we get in Xano, we're going to set this as a variable in WIST. We could just work with the Xano data that would work, but I don't know if you want to work with Xano. I don't know if you want to get this into Superbase. I don't know if you want to have this calculated by page data when people do like a questionnaire and they get an estimate or something like this. So I wanted to keep this as modular as possible for the community. So what I just did is I just put the Xano variables in a WIST variable and I worked within the clonable only with the WIST um, variables so that if you want to connect it to a different backend, you can just by up updating the variables in here. Yeah, so I just made this to make it easier for you to work with. So we have this in here. So we're going to add all of those together. Oh, we're going to add all of those together and define them as my number. And then we're going to divide my number by a thousand because we're showing K in here. So we need to get that amount. And yeah, that is all we're doing here. And we're going not to set this as text because we want the zero to be the first thing that is in there. So we're going to set this as um, an HTML attribute with the key of final number. So we go in this field here, revenue amount, we set the HTML attribute to final number, and we're going to set the number that we made this month in here, this month so far, you know, can go up. <laughs> so yeah, this is how we're going to do this. So no set text, we're going to do set HTML attribute, since this is the way counter JS is working, because we're doing some jQuery here. Perfect. So if you were to set this as text, it would just start at your number and wouldn't count up. So you need this for the count up animation. Start is zero, this is what's defined. And then the attribute is where it will count up to. That's why you have to set the HTML attribute. So let's go to the next thing here. Um, we have to set the SVG graph points by dollars. So we have dollars for week one, for week two, for week three, for week four, right? Oh, for week four. But dollars don't work in a graph. A graph works by points, Y and uh, Z, or I don't know what way around that is. But you know, like Y, Z. Um, but we have to now do a function to, first of all, take the dollar sign First of all, get the width and the length of the graph, figure out how's that graph looking. Then we need to take the dollar amounts, turn them into points and take those points and put them into the graph and then render the line based on those points. And this is what we're doing. So we run this function here when the request of monthly revenue finishes because we need to have the revenue data before we can do this, right? And then we're going to do this function in here what this is basically doing, what I just mentioned, we're going to return the dollar sign as points. This is what we're doing in this function. And then we're going to go into the HTML embed, which I just showed you in Webflow a few minutes ago, and we're going to set the points in there. It's very simple, very easy. And that's this one. Let's go to the next code. And this is the counter up animation. This is this one, the counter up. Right. And when the request finishes of monthly revenue, the same thing as we did before, we're going to run some jQuery inspired by Timothy Ricks and ChatGPT um, for the counter up animation. So this is just a basic counter up. We're going to start with a final number. That's a number that is applied in Webflow on it. And we're uh, setting two decimals. This is already applied in Webflow in their attributes. And then we have the count duration as well. This is in defined in Webflow. Actually, the final number is defined in WIST. So this is the data attribute we're going to add for final number, and this will be the end number. So this is where we'll count up to. So this is why we have to define an HTML, HTML attribute in WIST for that. Okay, that's the code. That's what this is doing. And then we're going to uh, reload the animation. So this is applied to this reload button. So when I click this button, we're going to reload the animation. So 
we have on event click run function, we're going to go to the um, <coughs> excuse me to the trigger with the attribute of waste trigger revenue load applied to it. That's the trigger we made in Webflow, remember? And we're going to click it programmatically. And that's hidden. And then we're going to set a timeout. Um, and then we're going to update the hidden revenue input. Actually, we don't need that anymore. I removed that from the project. I completely forgot about that. So we can remove there is no hidden revenue input anymore. So please forget about that. The only thing we're doing here, I reload this and we're going to click this trigger to play this animation. And then while doing that already on event click, we could perf we just perform the request monthly revenue so that when we click this, as you can see here, boom, we're just having this fade animation, but we're also reloading the data in the monthly revenue panel. Look at that. We have a fade and while it's fading out, we're getting the new data so that we avoid any content flashing and have it look magnificent. Wonderful. Perfect. So let's go to the week amounts. We're just going to set the week amounts here. So this is really just, we're going to go to the week amount, however, how many weeks you want to do. We're going to do set text, plain text. We're just going to do um, week dot to locale string and then we do ENUS because in United States we have a format where we have like the comma to separate the thousands. So we're just going to add the dollar sign for every of those. We're going to reference this to the variable week to any of those we have in here. We perform the request, the function um, to locale string and then we're going to reference this to the United States format of it. So this will turn out like this. Uh, you may want to use whatever format is uh, used in your country for that. Perfect. So this is all the setup for this. And then let me just go into the thing for the counter JS and into the utilities in Webflow. So this is the script we have to load for the counter JS. We did some jQuery in WIST. I showed you that. So this is the script we load on, on Webflow just to make sure that everything is going smooth. We're connecting to their library. And this is how you're going to create such an amazing account balance with dynamic data in WIST. Um, yeah, the previous recording just stopped for some reason. So I relocated and yeah, this was it. The Webflow script was the last part. I just wanted to highlight out that this exists, that this is in the project, that you please don't remove that. And yeah, this is the whole setup. This is what's going on here. We are getting this data dynamically. And I will be also sharing the Xano setup and the Xano um, snippet for what I was building um, in the video description down there because yeah this is this channel is called with Dev, so i will not go too deep in the xano setup but yeah basically what we're doing in xano just is defining the date ranges based on today at on um, based on today defining the timestamps and then based on the timestamps um taking those two times and uh, getting the records based on that and then creating a new object containing those records and defining that. So it's rather simple. I will put the snippet for the Xano stuff um, in the video description as well as the WIST and the Webflow clonable. And then you will just be able to clone this and use it in your project. Yeah, and I really hope that this helps you and that you can make all those exciting projects. And yeah, if you want to build a project with that, I would be more than happy if you put a link of the project that you're going to build with this in the video description so that we can, uh, yeah, that we can look at what you did and we can give you some feedback and maybe uh, showcase them in the community feed on this YouTube channel. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this helped you. And again, thank you so much for all your support. This really means the world to me. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.